scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please, I want you to listen very, very carefully. There are people here right now who are saying, Apostle, I was blessed through the worship. I was blessed through the prayer. I've been blessed through the teachings. And I do not need any cajoling. I need Jesus now. There are people who are saying there's, there's no point deceiving myself. I want to win that war of destiny now. And there are others who are saying, I remember being serious with Jesus, but somehow my life has gone haywire. I will count one to five. Wherever you are, run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus here. One. Run to Jesus. There's no need cajoling. You know if you are not sure. There's no need deceiving yourself. Run to Jesus. Three. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be alone. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name, your name is to be our Lord. If you are still coming, come. When it has to do with Jesus, there is space for you. Keep coming. If you are here wondering, Apostle, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm evil, but I can't remember making a conscious decision. Join them right now. It's time to take Jesus seriously. And all the overflows, please listen carefully. All the overflows, I'd like you to move to your LED screen. There will be officials guiding you. Those who are following from your home, your offices, wherever, this is a moment of destiny. I'd like you to come. Don't just come because you're, you're emotionally cajoled. I want you to mean business with Jesus. I'm still counting. Two more counts and we begin to pray. Four now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Are you still coming? Please make way for them, young and old, educated and uneducated. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. 
Jesus is calling, we blow that trumpet in Zion and we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. Jesus is calling. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Make that decision. Here on the plateau, Jesus is calling. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But as a people, we must trust in the name of the Lord our God. For there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. Now listen please. Let me tell you what coming to Jesus means. Number one, coming to Jesus means that you have tried and tried and exhausted every other option. And you are making this one decision. Jesus only, Jesus ever. Number two, coming to Jesus is based on the consciousness that there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. If you come to Jesus as a prophet, you will not be saved. If you come to Jesus as one who is more than a human, you will not be saved. There is an exact information you must believe about Jesus to be saved. Not everything about Jesus culminates to the salvation of your soul. Because he's many things, even to the believer who is already saved. But for one who needs Jesus for salvation, the Bible declares by the authority of scripture that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made acknowledging that jesus who has been crucified today exalted as lord and christ jesus as savior jesus as lord jesus as king is what brings you salvation so for all of you who are coming here this is more than just a desire to be serious with god it is a desire to be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. It is a desire to experience the new birth. That one experience that gives the spirit access to your spirit. For he that is joined to Christ, the Bible declares, is one spirit. May I request all of you who are kneeling, lying, whatever position, if you can, please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and i'd like you to say this after me you're not reciting a poem loud and clear jesus is in this place say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i believe in you as my savior as my lord and as my king i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive your life into my spirit and i declare by the authority of scripture that jesus from today is my savior my lord and my king i am a recipient of the life of god and i reign with him the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen and amen give jesus a big 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 hand clap let me pray for you father thank you for this once the bible says no man can come to you except you draw him and i thank you for the ministry of the holy spirit in their lives I decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are recipients of the life of God. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I declare that by this you are established in righteousness. You go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name. Plato, can we shout a loud, 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 loud hallelujah.
All right, here's what you do for me. Please listen very carefully. I'll request you to go back to your seat because there's a lot we have to do tonight. But um, the new convert class, all of you who came out, the new convert class holds tomorrow at 7 a.m. right at the main church here. Please do well. Make that sacrifice to come. There'll be counselors who will follow you up and just begin to guide you. Thank you for your bold decision. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 24. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's just make way for those moving so they settle and then we redeem the time. Yesterday we began to discuss along the lines of the theme. Please let me have your attention now. We began to talk about the concept of the glory of God. And I did share with us yesterday how that the glory of God is a representation of the multifaceted dimensions that are in God. The glory of anything represents all the attributes that make that thing valuable, that object, that person. The glory of a building is in the dexterity of its architecture. The glory of a device is in the, the, the kind of technology that was invested in that device. So when you talk of the glory of God, you have to understand the glory of God by examining the individual attributes of God. Everything that makes God God all together represent his glory. His power is an expression of his glory. His wisdom is an expression of his glory. His favor, his invincibility, ultimately his ability to be omnipresent, his ability to be omniscient, and his ability to be omnipotent. Now please look up. Theologically speaking, we understand that the Bible says that we are one with Christ and that is true. And also that today we are partakers of his divine nature, Apostle Peter tells us. But the kind of dominion that the believer has in Christ is not absolute dominion. There are two levels of dominion. There is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion. The kind of dominion that the believer enjoys in Christ is dominion that is as a product of our oneness. God's dominion is absolute dominion. Man's dominion is shared dominion. That means that dominion only remains to the degree to which we are connected to God. It is dominion that is outsourced, not the dominion that is derived. It's not dominion that is generated from within us. It is outsourced by our relationship with Jesus Christ. Are we together now? This is a very important information. And everything God is, he's given man the liberty to express it, except for three attributes of God. It is these three attributes of God he did not share with man. It is what puts him in a class all by himself. One is his ability to be omnipresent. Although man is one with God, one with God through Christ and in Christ, we are not given the liberty. It is not within the allowance given to us to be omnipresent. We cannot be everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. The gifts of the Spirit can give us the liberty to search into yesterday and move into pieces of tomorrow. But only God has the ability to be everywhere. Everywhere does not mean every location. Everywhere means every dimension. He can also be in yesterday and be in tomorrow. That is why he's called Alpha Omega. Not just Alpha and Omega. He does not need to move from yesterday into tomorrow. He can remain in yesterday while being in tomorrow. It's an attribute and an ability that man does not have. Number two, his ability to be omnipotent comes from the word potency. All powerful. All powerful. Once have I spoken. Twice have you heard the Bible declares that all power exclusively belongs to God. 
And then number three, omniscient or omniscience. The ability to be all-knowing. Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth and he said, we know in part, we see in part, and we speak or we prophesy in part. No matter how accurate our understandings are, the Bible says we are limited. And yet there is one who knows all things. All things. So his ability to be omnipresent, his ability to be omnipotent, his ability to be omniscient, powerful attributes that puts God in a class all by himself. And yet the Bible mandates the believer and mandates creation that among the many assignments that we have on earth, primarily and principally, that our lives and all that we do become expressions of the glory of God. We examined this already yesterday and we looked at faith. We looked at faith as the connecting point. How that it would take faith. There is a relationship between faith and manifesting the glory. That if you can believe, you will see the glory of God. I did tell us that faith is more than confession. That faith is more than believing. Believing is part of the process that leads to faith. But believing is not all there is to faith. You can believe and yet not have faith. Are we together? Because the Bible says even the demons believe. You can believe and yet not manifest faith. That faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person. That is Bible faith. Faith is action of obedience. Faith is obedience in one word. Obedience that is derived from your conviction about the revelation of God and the integrity of his person. I told you that Bible faith is predicated on two pillars, two foundations. Number one, God's integrity. Bible faith that produces results, that turns the believer to a sign and a wonder, is based on the awareness that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. That means you can trust him based on the fact that he has integrity. There is no reason for him to have to bend. When he speaks, he's committed to what he's saying. There is no one and nothing that threatens him to turn back from his word. Number two, God's ability. The second pillar of foundation upon which Bible faith is built is God's ability. We did discuss yesterday that there are men who have integrity, the willingness to do, the willingness to help, but they lack the wherewithal. The Bible says, now unto him who is able to do, not only willing to do. You truly find help when you meet integrity and ability. There are people who have ability, but they do not have integrity. There are others who have integrity, and they do not have ability. But this God we so love and we so boast about has both integrity and ability. And that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Are we blessed? Bible faith is built on that consciousness of God's integrity and God's ability. But I'll speak very quickly about one more key that connects us to manifesting the glory and then we'll pray. Praise the name of the Lord. First Chronicles 16, 24. The Bible says to declare his glory among the hidden, his marvelous works about the nation or all around the nations this just verse verse 24 and we'll stop there declare his glory among the hidden is the hebrew expression doxazo it is not just the glory but the unveiling of it to bring to the consciousness of creation how great god is through your life 
that he wants the knowledge of that glory not just the glory the consciousness that by our declaring his glory we compel the hidden and we compel the world of men to recognize and realize again the greatness of our God God wants us to declare his glory in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 16 for sake of time Matthew 5 and verse 16 Jesus was teaching and he already told us from verse 13 that we are the salt of the earth and then when we get to verse 16 here's what he says let your light Matthew 5 16 the word let there is permit permit your light to so shine before men God wants men to see it's not enough to have light it's not enough to be the light he says to permit that light to so shine before men that they may see your good works as a result they glorify your father which is in heaven are we together so the father is glorified when the sons reveal the light of God that is within them translated as good or mighty works in John chapter 15 when you read from verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 Jesus was teaching about the branch and and the vine and the branches and here's what he said he said hearing is my father glorified this is how God gets glory when you bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples go to verse 16 of the same chapter he says ye have not chosen me 15 16 but I have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means legitimized you made it legal that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain is someone learning so God desires that in and through my life in and through your life in and through your church in and through your business in and through your political career in and through your parenting in and through a state and a region like ours that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified may that be our corporate testimony in the name of Jesus Christ is someone shouting a louder amen so God desires that our lives become reflections of his grace and his glory now I want to teach very quickly on the mystery of death and glory to show you the relationship between death and glory that if you want your life to be an expression of the glory of God among the many keys one of them being faith in addition to your having faith in God there is a relationship and please I want you to pay very close attention to this exhortation before we pray there is a relationship between death and glory John chapter 12. I'll begin my reading from verse 1 to 6 and then we'll jump for sake of time to 23. Follow carefully. Verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, the Bible says, he came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been raised, whom he had raised from the dead. Verse 2. There they made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Verse 4. Now watch very carefully. Look at various reactions to that act of worship. The Bible isolates one of the reactions and uses it to teach us a lesson. The reaction by this man called Judas Iscariot. The Bible says, Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Verse 5. <laughs> read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Stop there. Before we go to the next verse. This woman is doing what the Bible calls worship before Jesus. And while everybody is enjoying the display 
of glory through surrender, one man among the disciples is looking at the cost implication, the wastage that is happening. And here's what he had to say. Why was this not sold and given to the poor? Looking and judging by what he's saying, this looks like wisdom from an economic standpoint. After all, he was treasurer. Next verse. Please read with me the next verse if you can see it projected. One to read. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And the bag and... <laughs> you mean a man can be that compassion? He invented that stretch of compassion. And you would think he was a good man. But the Bible says that the motivation behind everything he did was that he was a thief. That means that would have been sold and given to him. And he would help himself. He spoke well. He preached well. He did business well. Yet the motive was not that he loved the poor. Even though he mentioned the poor. But the motive was self. Listen. There are two things you have to be delivered from. In order to serve God acceptably. One is sin. The second is self. Most people think freedom from sin means that's all it takes. No, sir. Freedom from sin and freedom from self are the principal requirements to carry and manifest the glory of God in experience. If you are with me, please say amen. This man had worked with Jesus. You will think proximity with Jesus should have changed him. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but he was a thief. There are many people in our world today who admire men and women in ministry, men and women in business, men and women in politics and governance, men and women in career, men and women in all facets of life and most times when we see people who god has invested such measure of grace and excellence upon we admire them we draw inspiration from their lives and many times we say they are just lucky i want to show you one key that if you understand tonight will open you up to a, a world of possibilities beyond your imagination death and glory verse 23 of the same scripture john 12 jesus answered them the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified so he's talking about glory the time has come for the son of man to be glorified next verse here is the mystery verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies if it falls and is still alive it does not carry glory it must die the bible says it abided alone but if that's the condition if it die it bringeth forth much fruit everybody say death shout it one more time say death say glory say death say glory you don't choose either of them they are a package that go together. If it is glory that you desire, the gate that opens you to glory is death. This is a message that may not be very pleasant, but it holds within it the key to the prayers, many prayers that are written right here. The key to the answers is in this sermon. There is a relationship between death and glory. I've had the privilege by reason of what I do to pray for many dead people. Sadly and honestly, I've had the privilege to be with people minutes before their final transitions out of this earth. I have been locked in a mortuary. I told you yesterday where I was the only person alive, not locked by mistake. I went there to raise a dead body. And so they had to close me there. I prayed for the dead body, prayed for the dead body, it didn't come back to life, and I used that opportunity to think about my own life. 
instead of wasting that time. Because everybody there was once alive and everybody there once attended a funeral. So I used the opportunity to at least comfort myself that if the dead body did not rise, let me live with wisdom. Are we together? Not to get you emotional, but if you stand before a dead body, there are certain attributes in a dead body that will help us understand our message. Number one, a dead body is dead because it does not sustain the power to respond to any impulse, positively or negatively. A dead body is dead because it does not have the ability to respond. Insult the dead body, you stand looking stupid alone. Kick the dead body, you stand looking stupid alone. Encourage the dead body, you stand there and it does not make sense. Honor the dead body, salute the dead body. Whether it is positive or negative, the dead body seems not to have any effect. It does not have any effect on the dead body. When the Bible talks of death, number one, it means that by the engracing of the spirit, he must bring you to a point, listen carefully, where self, you know what self is? Self is the determination to see yourself lifted, glorified, emotionally comforted without acknowledging the government and the authority of Christ. It is a weakness in all men except God works on you. It is not a weakness in some men. All men. When you pass the sin gate through salvation, the next project of the Holy Spirit in your life is to lead you through that process called death to the flesh. And let me tell you, Anybody who is sincere with you will tell you that is the hardest journey in the believer's life. Meditation and climbing scriptures is pretty easy. Being a worker in the house of God is pretty straightforward. But death to the flesh. I will tell you why. Because you see, the requirement for true genuine death is that you must be brought to yourself to a point where nothing in your life replaces him there is something about the jealousy of god you must understand that anything that tries to take his place in your life and create another theme for your life outside of the drive to reveal jesus and to glorify him becomes his enemy even if he's the one that gave you it is possible that god can bless you and lift you and watch what he gave you take his place his jealousy will fight it, not to destroy you, but to rearrange that thing until Christ be enthroned as Lord and King. Are we together? Now watch this. I will tell you why self seems to be very alive in all humans. Especially from this part of the world. Because you see, the average person seated here, we come from backgrounds where usually, perhaps... A background of poverty, perhaps a background of idol worship, perhaps a background of polygamy, perhaps a background that did not acknowledge the value system of the kingdom. And chances are excellent that when you live a defeated life or live among people whose life has been marred with failure and all kinds of things, the pressure to succeed now drives you to go to school. The pressure to succeed drives you to be determined and it is dangerous when you succeed without God. Because chances are excellent that even if you give thanksgiving and dance in church, something within you tells you, my power and my might has given me this. God knows that there is a weakness in all men. We love the stage light. We love fame and celebration and there's nothing wrong in those things in themselves except that they produce a side effect in man that only death can kill are we together as a man of god you can be a great man provided they've not invited you to any place and given you any priority treatment i understand your fasting and prayer 
But the day they honor you in a way that makes you happy to be a man of God, you will be shocked that your prayer life will go down on its own. It is not only failure that destroys people. Success destroys faster than failure. Failure can even give you the motivation to search for what you have done wrong. But success gives you because you see, when you succeed, the results are obvious. There are many people today who cannot manifest the glory of God because they are still alive in themselves. And so when God wants to use you to birth dimensions of his glory in you, among the many things he does is to subject you through a process that begins to cut all of the appetites of the flesh and that itch to shift him away and stand to be the God of your own life and your own destiny. And can I tell you sincerely, except God helps you, no man can resist that temptation. I repeat, no man can resist that temptation. It's a matter of time. This has nothing to do with being good or bad. There is a level of glory. You read your Bible and read where kings build their stature and cause humans like them to bow to it. Don't you know those kings were once babies? And yet they grew to a point where they said, listen, I, I can't lie. I, this, this kingdom belongs to me. And God brought them and reduced them to animals. And when they came back to their senses, they acknowledged that there was a God in heaven. Be careful with what works in your life. Because what works can be what destroys you. Don't be afraid of what does not work. Just contend to make it work. But be careful with what works. What works is what destroys great people. Not what does not work. Death to the flesh. You know what it means to die? To die means to get to that point in your life in experience. Where everything about your life becomes a total and perfect reflection of the glory of Jesus. When you die to self, die to ambitions, die to fame, die to criticisms, die to applauds, die to honor, die to whatever. To die does not mean to not appreciate them. To die means to give them their boundary that you will never rise above Jesus in my life. Is someone learning? He says, let it not be that when you have built houses and built all of these things, you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. He said, but thou shalt remember, successful people have something wrong with them. They always forget. It is easy to remember when you are failing, but when you succeed, you can forget where he brought you from. You can forget what he did in your life. So before God will allow you to truly begin to reveal his glory, he subjects you to that training and that pruning. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the strong man glory in his strength. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. The pride of the believer is not just in achieving things. The pride of the believer is not just in the fame and the accolades of success, as important as those things are. The pride and the confidence of the believer must be hinged upon this revelation that Jesus is lifted and Jesus is glorified in your life. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, Hallelujah. holy. Men of God and women of God, let me give you a kind counsel. 
Be careful as you help people. Don't stop the process of death that is happening to someone through compassion. If God is not helping a man, be careful. Because sometimes the lack of answer is God allowing that person to come to a point where your pride, there are people who God will have to leave them to exhaust their wisdom and their pride and come to a point where they remain on their knees, then he comes. You see, because man does not give up easily. So God allows you in his love, but his discipline to try and exhaust your wisdom. It is by my preaching that members come. So he will allow that preaching and you will see the limitation of preaching outside of his grace. It is by my wisdom that I build this business empire and then in one day it goes down. God is not afraid of you losing because it can come back. The most important thing is your dealings. So don't you think when he's training you and you lose, he will stop the training. In his word, losing and gaining does not make anything. It is by his word that he lifts. It is within his power to make great. There is something about the human spirit. Until you are broken and you are brought to a point. Can I tell you this? For most people, especially men of God, respectfully speaking. One of the reasons why we do not see the power of God in dis on display in our lives and probably our churches is because our ego is connected to that process. This person has to be healed. They have to feel I am a man of God. And God says it's not necessary. The most important thing is that I am revealed. But once your ego is in the process, if you find yourself taking the shame, you have stolen the glory. Whoever takes the glory should also take the shame. He cannot take the glory while I take the shame. Are we together? The making of the great is very painful. Ask anybody you know who is being used today marvelously to reveal the glory of God. The school of death is not one you can pray away. There is no amount of fasting that can take it away. You must drink of that cup and be baptized with that baptism. So next time you see God using men mightily, don't you make a mistake to say they are lucky. Next time you see God using that businessman, provided he's doing it with the dignity of kingdom integrity, there is a story behind that result. The manifestation of the glory of God, that man has passed through the door of death. The price for the throne is the cross. You cannot get to the throne ignoring the cross. Not even Jesus prayed that away. Hallelujah. When I began my walk with God, my desire was to love God with all my heart. But through several dealings of the Spirit, I got to a point in my life and I came to the conclusion that the tendencies in the heart of man has no limit. You have to submit to God to deal with you and bring you to a point where you become like that dead body. So when they clap for you, you are grateful. But very quickly you know that there is an invisible hand behind you that men do not see. And you are quick to return that glory to him. Death to the flesh does not stop you from acknowledging the blessings that come, that follow excellence, that follow diligence and walking with God. You will have those blessings, they are yours. But the most important thing is that everything about your life becomes a reflection of his glory. The mystery about a dead vessel is that the more they see you, they should forget about you. The more they see you, they should remember Jesus, not you. Your life has become such a mirror. The mirror. When you look at the mirror, you do not see the object that the mirror was made of. You see the image it is reflecting. Are we together? Very simple principle. But you can fast for 100 days, study your Bible for one year, and don't die. You will be disappointed at what you become. No matter what else you do, if you do not submit to death, death by brokenness, coming to a point where nothing in your life can take his place, where he becomes number one, not just by talk, but in experience. 
I know he lives in your life. My question is, what is his position there? God can be within your heart and be number 30. Your desire to succeed being number one. Your desire for fame being number two. Your desire to prove a point to all who look down on you being number three. As legitimate as that sounds, if it is with God you want to do business, he has to become number one. Seated and exalted. Beyond your desire to show men you are successful. Beyond your desire for fame. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Oh Lord, be lifted high. For you are holy, righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted high. First Kings chapter 18. Very quickly, let's look at verse 29. From verse 29, I'm reading. This is the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. That who would be able to command fire from heaven to come and destroy or consume the sacrifice as proof of which God is deserving of our worship. Follow carefully and let's learn a lesson and then we begin to pray. And it came to pass, the Bible says, when midday was past, they prophesied, the prophets of Baal now, until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice or any answer or any that regarded. Uh -huh. Next verse. Elijah said unto the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar. Look at the various things he did. I wish there's time. I can teach all day on this. All the things that Elijah did for the fire to come. Number one, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. An altar is what empowers covenant. There's nothing demonic about the word altar. An altar is a system of authorization. No covenant works until an altar empowers it. It is the battery that empowers covenants. The very throne that God is sitting on is an altar. That is the throne that empowers the covenant that he has with the saints. It is called the throne of grace. Not just the place of grace. That throne that he sits on is the altar that empowers the covenant that he has with the believer. Elijah said unto the people, we're back to our scripture. He took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. 33. With the stones he built an altar. Okay, now he put wood in order. He cut the bullocks and all of that. Let's go to 34 for sake of time. He said, do it the second time, pouring water now on it. And then they did it the third time, 35. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water, 36. And it came to pass that at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day. Look at the motivation behind that miracle. I desire fire. The prophets of Baal said, Oh Baal, hear us. Our ego is on the line. And yet Elijah said, This is not about my ego. This is the reason why I desire this to be done. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. 37. This is the motivation for this reading. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me. Why? That these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again to him. Open up this contract unto me. Grant me access to this anointing. Give me this multiplied platform. 
Grant me access to the hearts of kings. Give me the keys of systems and structures. Every time you ask God for anything, he will ask you one question. Why? Lord, I desire increased membership in my church. It is within your power to give me. Why? Lord, I desire to be a multi-millionaire. It is within my power to make rich. But why? Lord, I want that power because all of the people from where I come from have looked down on me and I need to prove a point. He says it's not enough reason to get that investment from me. Why? This is a question that everyone here must answer tonight. Why did you write what you He had no business with the glory of God being revealed. He was a thief. A thief is a self-centered person, not a person who steals him. A thief is one who his entire focus is on self-gratification. Let me tell you this. You've heard me say it many times. I don't know if I've said it on this platform, but I think so. Many years ago, when I was praying and asking the Lord to use me for his glory as far as he would want to use, the Lord told me something that has become a strong anchor in my life. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That is a condition. If you will let men, if you are secured enough to get out of the way and let Jesus be seen, through the wonder working things that I do through your life. You will think that is a very easy instruction until God blesses you. If you are not blessed, it's easy to lay down anything because there is not much there. Whether God collects it or not, it will most likely fall. There's nothing there. So you, it's easy to lay down nothing. But when you have so much, go and read the story of the rich man and Jesus. Good master, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? He said, go and do this and that. He said, I have kept this from my youth. And it was true. Jesus said, one more test. Go and sell. He didn't say give. Sell. Use your creativity. Sell. And then give everything from your selling. It's easy to give what you were given. But it's difficult to get what came as a result of your transaction. Your value, your effort, your energy was part of that process. He says, give all to the poor. Then when you are done giving, come and follow me. And the man said, why are you doing this to me? Listen to me. Man of God, if the Lord should ask you to lock up your ministry now, do you love him enough to do it? Are you willing to stand the controversy? Of loving God if God asks you to shut down your conference your ministry can you do that this night Nigeria plateau state if the Lord asks you to empty your account as you are looking at me now remember what is there not that you empty it for your children or for politics empty it as a proof that you love me do you love him enough to go that far you know we say all kinds of things in church lord i love you i will give everything be careful with that prayer that is the kind of prayer god loves when you say i will give you everything i assure you he will test you on that prayer if you ever pray that prayer i have good news for you he's coming he will vet that prayer thoroughly. When he brings you to a point where you are left with nothing, you will know that when you have Jesus, you have everything. So whatever else is added, it does not become connected to you. You see, when you die, God does not just desire to take those things away from you. He desires to take you away from those things so that the consciousness of those things you do not build your relevance around those things he becomes the epicenter of your life the drive of your destiny i stand before the god of heaven and i submit to you believe me when i tell you that i love jesus christ more than ministry 
I will tear down ministry like a curtain in one minute if he calls for it. Remember my story of the dead body. When you stand before a dead body, tell the dead body, I'm going to withdraw money from your account. Will it answer? Tell the dead body, I do not acknowledge that you are great. Will it answer? Tell the bo dead body, you are so great. Wake up and receive a handshake. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the body that is the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Whatever will bring you glory through my life, I say, Amen. Let it be. Apostle Paul said, For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let me give you an advice. Don't covet people's testimonies until you are willing to go through the process that produced it. Don't just covet anointings. I'm, I'm, there's, there's nothing wrong in desiring some of those things. But many times, respectfully speaking, when people see me, the first thing they want is impartation. And there's nothing wrong. Sometimes they kneel down and say, Apostle, Elijah asked for two. I'm asking for four. And I'm looking at them with deep compassion. Do you know the kind of death that brings you certain levels of glory? You want to tell the sick be healed and he's healed? It takes more than cramming scripture, my dear people. You want to speak over destinies and the tulip gates of their lives open. It takes more than oratory and utterance. Blood must be dripping on your altar as a sign that you really died. It is from that that power flows. Genuine spiritual power that produces wonder-working results. Unfortunately and respectfully so, we don't teach this again in church. That's why people jump around just coveting things and never see anything happen to them. I tell you the price for genuine power and to be a vessel that reveals the glory of God is more than fasting. Fasting is important. It's more than prayer. It's more than night vigils. The price is death. No matter what you do, if you are still alive in yourself, there is still a long journey for you to go. Are we learning? Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, I may be describing someone here. You are going through a season that you've not been able to explain. You pray and it looks like certain things are not happening in your life. And yet you pray for others and they come with a testimony. Be patient. There is something God is doing in your life. There is a level of pride and self and flesh that is breaking away from you. A time will come in your life. It will no longer matter again. It's not about me. It's all about you. Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your faith. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender to your will. That is the language of people who are dead and surrendered. Completely surrendered. That you love him with your all. Everything he has is given to you. And when it comes to you, it is still his own. If you keep your money in the bank, does the bank say it is their money? Please talk to me. It is with them, but you still say it is my money. And the day that bank calls your money their money, what do you do? Do you have to hate the bank? The moment the bank calls your money their money, you begin to suspect them. Will you add money there again? Just Plato, people of the living God, 
there is so much that God wants to do with us but it will take more than just dancing and singing and preaching it will take even more than just fasting and praying as important as that is it will take more than just prophesying and dropping prayers it will take more than just conferences and conventions the price for all of him is all of you the price for all of him is all of you the price for all of him is all of you the price for all of him is all of you preacher the price for all of him is all of you politicians the price for all of him is all of you not your speaking not your campaign all of him businessmen the price for all of him is all of you academicians the price for all of him is all of you when we get to a point where our all is surrendered to him he will make a wonder out of your life a wonder that will shock you first and then everybody around you believe me i know what i'm saying You want the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Genuine, authentic power as of old? It takes more than just carrying money to drop before a man of God to pray for you. There is a place for that. But believe me, there are wells that don't come by impartation. You must dig that well through death. It takes more than speaking intelligently to convict hearts that they born and come to Jesus. You can stretch your theological knowledge from border to border and wonder why it does not create any impact. Businessmen, when you do business as a dead vessel, a dead vessel meaning one whose entire life centers around revealing Jesus. From beginning to the end, it will always be it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. If that child is only your child, it will give you headache till you wrinkle yourself to death. Remember, dear parent, that you are only a steward, not an owner. Let the owner take responsibility over the child and you will see the power of the owner. If that car is yours, you will maintain it. If that ministry is yours, you will maintain it. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. Lack started when ownership came. In this kingdom, we don't own anything. Owners are rebels. We are only given access. If God gives you an anointing, it is his anointing at work in you. You walk with that consciousness. He gives you resources. They are. It is his resources only at work through you. This is a very deep revelation that we must have. Tonight, we are going to trust God to lay down our pride. We are going to trust God to lay down every boasting. It is within my power. I know how to organize my life. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early, dear Plato State, and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. My Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. He said, if the Lord has not been by our side, now may Israel say, if God does not lift you, you cannot be lifted. <laughs> A man can receive nothing except he is given. And if you do receive it, you must let your world know that you received it. Your attitude of humility and brokenness. The speed with which you led Jesus 
to be revealed and glorified in that process. You see, let me tell you this. When your life is committed to revealing Jesus and bringing him glory, there is no end to what he can give you. Pastor Nat got it so precisely. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Listen carefully. I'm not just singing. I'm just a vessel. This is not self-condemnation. It is revelation. And nothing more. When you're done using me to be that kingdom millionaire, using me to become that political whatever it is you now become, using me to become that parent, using me to become that great prophet, apostle, man of God, I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Make sure you are not telling lies. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. In my life be glorified, be glorified. I just wanna say, turn that song into a prayer while you are seated. For some of you, the Lord is speaking to you. Your pride is why the glory cannot be revealed in your life. Someone is praying. Talk to Jesus. Is someone talking to Jesus from the depth of your heart? I have believed that ministry will rise. After all, I can prophesy. Who is like me? No, not so. After all, I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No. Someone is praying. This is part of the conference, oh, and this is part of the miracle service already. Pray. Let it be. Break that pride once and for all. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Babu Wanika Maraka. Pray. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found out Babu Wanika Maraka. Hey, hey. Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka Listen some of you may have heard me say this. Let me tell you how this song came. I'm not a musician. I was in Cameroon for a meeting and I woke up in the middle of the night. I just sat in the living room and tears were coming down from my eyes as I was just looking at the faithfulness of God in my life. I was just meditating, looking at where God took me from. And I was just saying, oh God, only a fool will say in his heart that you cannot lift men and Jesus glorified businessman do your business with the intelligence God has given you but behind your results make sure that all that you get and all that you are are only a means to an end the end being Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified politician do your campaign as much as you can and may God grant you the grace while you do so. But remember that whatever you become and whatever you are, never forget that it is only a means. The end being Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. I have no business doing anything, whether you call it ministry or whatever. 
before I participate in anything, I want to find out how it will reveal Jesus. If it has no business bringing him glory, you will not get my attention. Some of you, by reason of this conference, in the next two to three minutes, is going to be a time of deep repentance and brokenness. That you will take away your golden crown and cry before the God of heaven, search my heart, O God. I, I bring my heart like a trophy before you. You know my tendencies. You know my royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. The abode Sujada de Nakao, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana. Oh, 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 Someone is praying. Take everything, oh God. I vow that as you use me and as you lift me, that Jesus will be seen through everything. Through everything. The tendencies that are locked up from within our hearts. The appetite to want fame. The appetite to want name. The appetite tame those appetites by your spirit someone is praying two more minutes let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart Ah. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you.
please if you are yet to submit your prayer request i just want you to wave it high and an usher would come and pick it right now we have a few minutes and god will be doing a very quick work it's a miracle service tonight and they glorified god in me man of god god desires that men will see his glory revealed in you businessman parent student leaders god desires the multifaceted dimensions of all that he is to perpetually find expression in and through your life can i tell you this listen carefully believe me you have not seen prosperity till you die die to yourself and to your ambitions god will take the prayer request of a man for decades and give you as a lover's gift you have not seen influence and increase until you die to yourself he will give you the keys to the hearts of kings and nations We have come tonight, number one, to see Jesus exalted and glorified. We have come tonight to see and experience a display of his power as a component of his glory. We have come tonight to experience the wisdom of God. Can I tell you this? Now that you have gotten the message that in your death is your life, in your weakness is your strength, in your allowing Jesus to be revealed is your relevance. Now we can pray. We can pray that he comes upon us to heal the sick. We can pray that he comes upon us to cast out the devils that try to mock his might and his supremacy over lives and over destinies. We can pray that an engrace in you did not come for this meeting will rub off on you and you will go back as a sign and a, and a wonder. Are you ready to pray that prayer now? Everywhere all across this field and the overflows, I want you to pray a sincere prayer. Now that your heart is determined to see Jesus glorified, pray one prayer. Lord, do not restrain your hand as far as lifting or blessing me is concerned. Go ahead and pray that sincere prayer and watch the wonder working power of he who was he who is and that which is to come please pray let your healing power rest upon me let your power to restore rest upon me I desire that my life and everything about me I desire that it becomes a revelation an epistle of the wonder working power of Jesus someone is praying no matter how far even those outside of this place pray from the depth of your heart they will reach you wherever you are pray Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Oh, 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 my rising has come.
Now, please listen carefully. We're going to do a very, very quick walk here that the Lord is going to be doing tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please, I want you to help the ushers. There are so many people, and there's only so much the ushers can do. So, if someone is under the anointing close to you, whether or not you are an usher, please do well to help them so that they don't injure themselves, especially if and when there will be a need to bring out a few people here. Now, let me tell you why impartations happen and some of these supernatural manifestations. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish and jamboree by indisciplined people. You have to understand that the language of God is power. When the power of God comes, it does not do the same thing to everyone. For others, he's bringing deliverance for them. For others, he's bringing healing. For others, he's restoring. Regardless the prayer request, it is still power that will answer it. According as his divine power had given us all things, all things reside within the power of God. If the power of God is released, many things happen at the same time. So don't just focus on the preacher and those shouting under the anointing. Much more than that. You must open up your heart to receive. And then for those under the anointing, don't you think you are just falling and people are carrying you and bringing you out just for show. You must realize that something is happening within you and you must open your heart to receive it. Are you ready now? The first issue we are going to deal with tonight is the issue of delay. Please look up. Delay is a spirit. I taught you yesterday that the zenith of dominion is dominion over time. Whatever eats your time has taken something significant from your life. But within the economy of God, the Bible says God can not only restore things, but he can restore years. And I will restore time. When you meet a dying man, what he wants is time, not things. The greatest desire of man, whether known or not, is time. Because no matter what leaves you, if there is time, it can come back. But no matter what you have, if there is no time, it is a waste. Every other thing finds its value when there is time. Let me tell you how to know the spirit of delays at work in your life. When and if the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age, there is delay. Because according to the authority of scripture, the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. It is true that the devil can bring delay, but thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Now I'm going to pray. As I rebuke that spirit of delay and declare speed, two things will happen. You will find out that people will begin to run. Please, I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves and bring them out. Those under the anointing. I want to command that spirit because everything that is not a planting of God, it must give way tonight. Is someone ready to end delay? Not just for your life, but for all who are connected to you. Now in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I stretch my hands by the message of the God of heaven and I decree and declare the spirit of delay, I command it broken right now. I command it broken right now. Please begin to bring them out. I declare delay be broken. I release speed. Speed to your destiny. The power of God comes upon you right now. Speed in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare speed. No more delay. Speed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Some of you as God is touching you, he's touching your family members. No power in existence has what it takes to stop you from moving forward. Help them please. Speed, I decree and declare upon the plateau in the name of Jesus. Let delay of all sorts be broken now. Let delay of all sorts by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let it be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let delay be broken.
might hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the, the chains, chains falling. falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Number two, now I want to pray. It's a prayer of restoration. And I see the anointing coming on several people. Hear me. What this grace will do is that everything that left you that should not have gone by this anointing, wherever it is, it returns back. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, everything you have lost, connections, relationships, spiritual virtues at the count of three may that fire and that grace that makes for restoration come upon you bring them out one two three help that woman please take that grace now in the name of Jesus they are taken for a prey and none say it restore we come with a voice of restoration let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Everything you have lost, let it return to you. I prophesy as I was commanded and there was a sound. Bones came to his bone. Bones came to his bone. Business came to his business. Finances came to finances. <laughs> Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout a loud amen. Let there be restoration. Now hear me. Please look at me. There are families here. You've lost everything literally. Everything. Opportunities. You were not like this. But everything started crashing down. Finances went down. Relationships went down connections went down I stand by the power of the Holy Spirit and I declare by this anointing let that grace come upon you for restoration let that grace come upon you for restoration hear me when Saul met prophet Samuel the first miracle that happened to him was that everything the donkey that you are looking for has been found there are anointings that can cause everything that strayed from its place of assignment to return back again now I want to pray ah. I don't know how we're going to do it let me just pray for those in front first so they can return back for all of you in front here, I decree and declare by this anointing, experience strange restorations by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you by the anointing that raised Christ from the dead. The grace of priesthood it comes upon you and it brings you restoration. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. This man, that man wearing suit, you, what do you do, my friend? Where? Huh? In just your own ministry. I want to pray for you. You are a sincere man. Please don't be embarrassed. I don't mean to embarrass you. You are a sincere man, but there is so there are so many things for you to learn and understand. But in truth, the call of God is upon your life. And you have been praying and crying that God will anoint you. Please lift your hands. An anointing is coming upon you. You will shift into dimensions of the teaching grace and the healing anointing. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. Help him please. You will never be the same. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's shifting you to a new dimension. I impart that grace upon you. Access to the wisdom of the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Madam, this woman wearing green. Mama, something is coming on you. I'm seeing like oil being poured on her head. 
in the name of Jesus is bringing you to a separation by the Spirit of God and God is going to be doing great and mighty things even in your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is the Son of the Living God for all those in front here I declare you are blessed in Jesus name if you can please return to your seat I want to minister the power of the Holy Spirit now that's why I want them to clear the way now please hear me I believe that everyone who names the name of Christ should be free from any and all kinds of demonic influences look at me the spirits wicked spirits are behind the tragedies and the ills that are in the lives of men and families believe it or not he said I desire to come to you even I Paul once and again but Satan hindered us he's hindered families I want to pray some of you will marvel and wonder can I tell you most of the things you wrote here as a prayer request demon spirits walk like an octopus they will touch several aspects of your life and confuse you but it's one and the same spirit but when that spirit by the authority of the name of Jesus is taken out of the way I have seen what the power of God can do over demons and I can have seen the testimonies that come when people are genuinely set free I am come he said that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly it is a thief that cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy now I want to pray there are spirits that have sat upon the destinies of men some of you mysterious occurrences around your life that will not let you go forward I want to pray I want to that's why I said clear the way because they are going to bring some other people here at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus it is a name that is above every other name exalted as Lord and Christ and as you shout that name every planting that is not of God must give way it's time for your liberty it says to open up the prisons to those that are bound to set the captives free father I decree and declare that in the name of he that died and rose again exalted as Lord and Christ every spirit that is not of the Christ standing the way of your people as they shout the healer let it be like the crumbling of the walls of Jericho are you ready now at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three shout Jesus I command those devils go now I command those spirits release their destinies now bring them out by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I break every yoke I command every activity of witchcraft and diabolism it leaves you now releasing your destiny I declare that release I command Satan let God's people go free in the name of Jesus blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross and if the Son sets you free you are free indeed I declare your liberty I declare your liberty from affliction your liberty from every demonic activity bring them out hallelujah now please hear me the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's hands your hand is a symbol of your productivity I want to pray for you the fire of God is coming and bringing you great deliverance I'm seeing the number 21 21 people I'm seeing that this fire is coming upon them right now I decree and declare wherever you are by the power that raised Christ from the dead I call a I command those chains be broken right now chains be broken be broken help them please be broken in the name of Jesus Christ chains be broken
in the name of Jesus Christ chains be broken bring them out I'm hearing a name Stephanie is there someone with that name Stephanie the Lord wants to visit you right now the Stephanie I'm seeing is wearing red complete red is there someone like that Stephanie please don't come out carelessly make sure that you fall into this category Stephanie I want to pray for you what he says to one he says to all I want to pray for you In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every planting that is not of God by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare it comes to an end now. Agree with them and shout amen. In the name of Jesus. Wow. I just saw light across the minister's stand. I shouldn't say this, but I just saw light. I, I saw the anointing coming on two people right now just on the, the minister's seat just light and the Lord is saying a season is coming to an end and another season is opening I don't know who that is for but in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands by the power of the Holy Spirit let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ even one of the ministers is receiving a grace for prayer the spirit of prayer and supplication that grace help them please my God please help them in the name of Jesus that grace for prayer and supplication is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I don't know if there is a woman here they call you mama grace is there someone like that I just heard that I don't know if it's your daughter that is grace but it's like they call you mama grace of grace that's in house of the mother of grace please if there's someone like that I want to pray for you we're going to be praying for the sick shortly but I just heard that and then I'll pray for you who is Joel Joel I'm hearing a name Joel is there someone with such a name please don't tell lies make sure Jesus is here Joel Joel mama who did they call mama grace you mama can I pray for you Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Lord himself by his spirit is doing a new thing. I'm seeing the Lord heal someone right now. I'm seeing someone you've been experiencing signs of arthritis. We're going to pray for the sick right now. Signs of arthritis. But right now that pain is living in the name of Jesus Christ. That pain is living right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama Grace, I'm still hearing that name again. I presume that there might be a number of women, but we'll just stand by faith and pray for the ones we have here. In the name of Jesus Christ. This right here, someone is going to shout loud under the anointing there. Pick the person and bring the person. Just write down the anointing. I just saw like fire. There might be shouts elsewhere, but right here. Mighty God. Hmm. I 
will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good i will worship you forever love you forever because this god is too good i know a god who is mercy full and kind faithful and gracious and the apple of his eyes the thoughts that fills his heart every morning known and night he loved me when I didn't care and, and was patient till I came running run back, back, back into Oh, this will be your testimony. Look how he's turned my life around. Baby, shining light. His glory to reveal. I will worship. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Just because this God is too good. name of Jesus I decree and declare the power of God will come on one of you here the moment that happens the Lord is bringing healing and deliverance just one of you who is in front here very quickly I already begin to sense the healing anointing I just saw an anointing coming on one of you who is in front here in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare let that be so for you in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My attention is distracted there. Please, um, I want you to help the person who the power of God comes upon right now. I just saw oil being poured just straight down this road. Majesty. Now in the name of Jesus, I declare for all of you who are out here, may the Lord visit you and visit your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord visit you and visit your children. In the name of Jesus, I'm about to pray for the sick now. Twelve years, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Who is that? Twelve years. I'm seeing the number twelve. Twelve years. Please don't just come out anyhow. Just let's just 12 years. Ah, salvation has come to you. Who is that person? 12 years. 12 years. Let's celebrate Jesus. It is coming to an end. I know you are here. Here in your power. I know, I know you, you are, are here. here. Precious Holy Spirit, I know, I know you are, are here, here in your glory. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit, I know, I know you, you are, are here, here. Ah. here in your glory. I know, I know you are here, sweet Holy Spirit, I know, I know you, you are here. here, you are here to take us higher, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. Now, hold on, please. I'm going to ask Pastor Nat, listen, there are many of you who are called into prophetic worship. Now hear me. Help them please. He's going to blow the trumpet. And hear me. As he blasts that trumpet. 
from the depth of the spirit, a mantle and a grace is going to rest upon you. Please hear me. Doing music is not just about singing. It's a spiritual affair. Some of you will draw songs from the realm of the spirit. Some of you will hear melodies in the night. Some of you who are instrumentalists will lay your hands from tonight. And it will be a different sound. Are you ready? There will be a mighty baptism. It doesn't matter what auditorium. My God. A sound is coming. By the spirit of grace. And upon this sound. There will be an awakening. A prophetic awakening. From within your spirit. Yes sir. Oh, spring up our wells. We call for prophetic fountains, mistrials of glory, prophetic psalmistry. We decree and declare let that grace and that mantle rest upon you. Songs of deliverance, songs in the night, songs of worship. Find the altar of worship afresh again, afresh again. Let fire fall upon your ministry. dimension new seasons new seasons pastor sam the lord is just telling me to tell you truly that he's bringing you into a new season in ministry that your influence will start rising beyond gombe state this is what god is saying god will begin to draw people to come and drink from you that are beyond that state and that grace by the spirit of grace may that grace rest upon you and it will start as the ministry of prayer and then it will move to the prophetic prayer and the prophetic in the name of jesus may god make that happen for you by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare let those wells be opened by the spirit in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah now hear me Hear me. I'm seeing the grace of the intercessor and I'm seeing the number 40. Many of them women. There is a prophetic grace for prayer and intercession. At the count of three, that mantle is coming on people right now. Prayer groups, intercessory groups will arise by the Spirit. One, my God. Two, three. Take that fire now. Plateau. Let the grace for intercession fall upon you. Women of prayer. Women of power. Women that wail until prophecy is breathed over the state, over families. We decree by the decree of the watchman. Help that woman, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have that woman, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the decree of the watchman, let it be so. We establish it as an ordinance in the realm of the spirit that the incense of prayer will arise from the plateau even to the heaven. Now, I want to pray for the sick. I believe in the healing ministry. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Angel. 
angels bow the redeemed worship you now my sister this lady wearing yellow lift your hands i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's opening you up to a new season in the name of jesus may that anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new season in the name of jesus christ Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Say that the angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. trusting God for a healing miracle I want you to believe in the power of Jesus to heal you can bring the requests up while we do that so we hurry up right now please lay your hands wherever if it's your head lay your hands there as a point of contact I tell you there's there's such mighty anointing to heal right now something is happening 
all of the overflows everywhere the power of God to heal you are the Lamb you are the Lamb hallelujah now if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest as a point of contact and for all of you who are following you're watching from your homes you're watching from wherever whatever tv station there is your chance to experience the power of jesus from america to europe to asia here in africa all of the states connected and following here is your chance to experience the miracle working power of jesus i want you to believe as i pray listen miracles are not superstitions they are direct products of the power of God in the life of a believing Christian that you believe he's able to heal you then he comes to heal agree with me as I pray now hear me our time is up and I don't intend to keep us unnecessarily long but we have to do this very quickly I'm just going to be praying for one or two minutes. The moment I pray for you, a miracle, already miracles are already happening everywhere. Inside here, outside, for those of you who came, you came and probably miracles were already happening to you. Now, as I pray for you, I want you to believe and receive by faith. Remember, I taught you the law of faith. When I pray for you, I'm going to request that you do what you could not do. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you, may I please request for sake of time that you use either this place in front by my left or that place by my right. The moment the power of God touches you and you find out that you could do something, a relief, the growth is gone, the pain is gone, you couldn't walk, now you can walk, you were blind, now you can see. I will request when I ask you to, to run out and stand here and we'll take a few of the testimonies before we pray finally over the request and then we're done for the night make sure you do not sit back as his power touches you perhaps you may have received a miracle yesterday and you didn't have the time to prophesy when those who are coming out are coming out you can join them very quickly when I say in Jesus name please shout a believing amen in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now every spirit of infirmity here upon this ground and here upon the plateau we decree and declare in the name of he who died and was raised by the glory of the father seated and exalted even Jesus I decree and declare that your hold over God's people is broken now in the name of Jesus now I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. From the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet. Be healed now. I release miracles in the name of Jesus. I command blind eyes to be opened now. Whether partial blindness, complete blindness, be healed now. Deafness. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every blood condition. I rebuke that condition in the name of Jesus. Lumps. The Lord is showing me lumps of all kinds. I declare that those lumps disappear now. Hepatitis. Be healed now. HIV. Be healed now. Cancer. Be healed now fibroids be healed now cardiovascular conditions be healed now bone conditions you came here on crutches you came here using an aid be healed in the name of Jesus there's someone I'm seeing you can't see very well in fact it's, it's almost as if one eye is completely blind but right now as I'm praying you are from a distance the power of God will come upon you and you will see that you can see clearly right now in the name of Jesus 
bone conditions be healed right now i'm seeing a young lady who came here you are ss in the name of jesus christ we change that genotype now by the power of the holy ghost peptic ulcer be healed right now lower abdominal pain be healed right now pain around your vertebra be healed in the name of jesus severe waist pain in the name of jesus the lord is healing you there's someone you have just hit around your body in jesus name be healed now now there's someone you have a condition it looks like mums you know what mums are where there's one a swelling at the side of your cheek but it's been there for a while you would notice that the contour of your face one side looks swollen than the other you've seen this you've prayed you've done your best but it's not gone right now i command that that condition is restored in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there's someone you're a young man but you get tired very easily almost like a very old person you can't stand for long i declare be healed right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god here at this conference be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name now very quickly i want you to check yourself and do what you couldn't do the moment you find out that there is a miracle boldly make your way to the front right now let's celebrate them as you come check yourself check yourself in any of the overflows the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you you've been healed relieved of any pain migraine headaches going make your way to the front are you celebrating miracles people are coming out very quickly make your way boldly to the front look at miracles are happening my goodness are you seeing what is happening here what are you turning to wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you Can we have one or two pastors? Just help me. Stick to the darkness we shine. Out of the ashes we rise. No one like you. Not like you. Keep coming. My goodness. Are you seeing what Jesus is doing? Plateau the beautiful. Is this how you celebrate the hand of God? We want to shame the devil upon the plateau soil in the name of Jesus to reveal by these miracles that Jesus is doing a new thing upon the plateau. If you're in agreement, shout a loud amen. Please. Is long. Hallelujah. The lump. Okay. On our side and the breast is gone. Lump. Something is happening somewhere. What is happening there? Looks like there's a miracle happening there. What is that? I can't see it. There's a miracle happening there. Ah. Oh, a wheelchair. Give Jesus a big shout. Hallelujah. another wheelchair there another miracle you have a track record of keeping your word and you're not about to stop doing hey oh lord who are you you are mighty lord oh lord who are you you are mighty lord shape you all of for joy Oh, 
Yes, let's take a few of the miracles. Are you ready? Let's have another pastor there. Someone attend to them there. Do we have anyone? Please, any of the ministers. Okay, if you're ready, let's, let's just save time very quickly. Miracles are happening here. I'm seeing in my vision, I'm seeing someone, you're using a crutch. It's not a, it's not a wheelchair. It's like a, a, a stick or something. I don't know. This is the vision I'm seeing. I don't know who, whether the person is here or in any of the overflows. Don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. You are good. You are kind. Lift it up and you walk. You are born of peace. Lost for words. words. Trying to describe you. Elohim. Elohim. Lift it up and walk. Elohim. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Your greatness is all I see. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot lose. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a drop record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. Hey! Hallelujah. Sir. What happened to you? What's that now? Oh, the overflow. Something is happening in the overflow. Where is that now? Which of, I don't know which of the overflow. Let's celebrate though, something is happening there. Now, we don't know what is happening, but we know something is happening. Hallelujah. Let's have goodness. We have to work with time. Sadly, we can't take all of this. Okay, let's, let's take two or three and then we'll have to pray on the request. Very quickly, please. Anyone ready? Very quickly. Praise okay, so. The Lord, from 2011, I've been having severe pain on my left leg. Yes. At times, it would just freeze. And when I came here, I even was dancing. Please, Everybody don't, don't put anyone jump. under pressure. I am no, jumping no, now. No. The pain is gone. Completely. Jump. Completely jump. Gone. Jump. Any pain. Completely. Please don't, don't put anyone under pressure. Please. Please. Don't do that at all. Don't put anyone under pressure. Hallelujah. If it happens for them, there are people who might not receive all of the miracles here, but that the seed has been sown. Please let them be. We're not faking it here at all. Another miracle has happened there. Only God knows. It looks like the overflow is receiving more than us here. Their faith seems to have. Praise the Lord. Before I came here, I had serious abdominal pain, but I cannot feel it again. Praise Completely the Lord. gone. It never returns in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, please, very quickly. Amen. Arthritis left this very moment. Arthritis. Yes. I can't. Who is speaking? Hallelujah. Okay, what happened? Arthritis left. Confirmed okay. medically? Yes, sir. How long, yes, sir? sir? Over 12 years now. Your legs? Yes, sir. Which of them? The left leg. Move it. Let the devil see you. Let the devil see you. Run. 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 Overflow. Overflow ah. one. Overflow one. Amen. From over the overflow. From the overflow. From the overflow, yes. I am healed. I am healed. <laughs> From sickle cell anemia, I am healed. She's walking with a walking stick and she has been healed of sickle cell anemia. Yes. Oh dear, I wish I could. Which of, you, please, when you talk, um, the pastor's in charge, let us know which overflow you are speaking from. The we car park. The car park. Where is the car park? Overflow three. So what happened there? Let's know. Sickle cell anemia. She's been healed. What couldn't she do before? She was walking with her head, a, a, a walking stick, but now she could walk. Ask her to walk headed. without it now. My goodness. Yes, please. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Upon the approach surgery, my eyes got three times. Three times? Yes. Surgery? Yes. What for? One eye. What did they tell you was wrong? First was cataract, second was change of lens. They told you they had to change the lens again. And what happened now? Friend, I can't see with the eyes even after the third surgery. You couldn't see? Yes. And right now? What couldn't you see before? You can't view anything entirely. I can't even see you. You, you couldn't see me from Whoa. there. Yes, sir. One. Hey. Two. Three. Five. Ten. Give Jesus praise. So yes, please. this one, this brother Nash is the one that easily get tired on the leg and the Lord healed him. How long, my friend? For how long? It has been long. It has been long. And right now, yes, sir. completely, yes, sir. we rebuke that tiredness in the name of Jesus. For sake of time, let's just have one, 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 one each so that we can, otherwise we're going to stay all through the night. Yes, please, one there. Anyone who is ready, go ahead. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Several How? years gone. Several years gone. I have terrible pain on my back. Before I came, my blood pressure is gone. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Gone forever in the name of Jesus. Severe chest pain and knee pain completely gone. Gone forever. Amen. Now for all of you who have come, before I pray for this, Pastor Nat is going to lead us through two minutes of high praise. Jump every devil out of your life. Are we together? Listen, I want you to prepare. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Because it is in praise that his power is made manifest. Now for all of you who have been healed, I declare it will never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout! Hey, I stand amazed in your presence. Hey, I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your presence. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on, please. This is from the overflow. Who is that? The young lady. Let me see. How were you walking before? How were you walking, darling? You couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. Properly. Lift it now. Walk. Walk. Move. Oh, my God. Oh, she walked from the overflow. Are you giving Jesus a big, 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 big praise? Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Hey, Come on, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Now please hear me. The Bible is very clear as to the fact in the name of Jesus for all of you who are healed. Let there be your testimonies remain forever. Particularly I'm seeing this man standing in the name of Jesus. Your miracle is established. How long has this been? Six months. For six months? Eight months. Eight months. What happened to you? Arthritis. I could not stand. You couldn't stand? I couldn't stand at all. Without the help of my cousin, I could not stand. Now unto the one upon the throne, we raise a sound. We raise a sound. time. Now on to the Lamb upon the throne. We raise the sound. We raise the sound. All over the nations. All over the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands by faith right here, everyone. Stretch your hands by faith and begin to pray. I am agreeing under the corporate anointing. This is not just Joshua Selman, Pastor Nathaniel, Reverend Akila, all the men and women of God upon the plateau here represented. We stand as a united church praying over this. Is someone stretching your hands that these Egyptians I see today, that I see them no more forever? Are we in agreement? I'm going to bow my knees and I'm going to pray. Now, let me tell you this, and, and this is true. Um, many of you know that I love Pastor Nat with all my heart. He's a very great, great vessel of God. There is a mystery about him and this trumpet. You see, the shout of a king, when in the midst of a people, produces wonders. I'm going to bow my knees and lay my hands and I'm just going to ask him as inspired by the spirit. He's blowing over by the spirit. Do you know what that means? That the sound is blowing away shame. Blowing away pain. Listen to me. It is by the sound of the trumpet that there is a separation between those who live and those who stay. That means the sound of a trumpet can separate what should go and what should stay. The sound of a trumpet separates a condition. It is not just for rapture. It is not just the sound of the archangel. The trumpet is a mystery that as the shofar is blown with understanding, it can bring a separation between what must stay and what must leave. Are you ready by faith? Stretch your hands here. You don't have to kneel. I'll do the kneeling for you. And Pastor Nat will just blow prophetically. I like you to believe because many of you, you will go back home and you will watch testimonies lined up like visitors waiting for you. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray.
Jesus. Please shout a believing amen. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the decree of the watchers and by the message of the God of heaven. These Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more forever. You will see no more forever. You will see no more forever. By this request, help, help that lady please so she doesn't injure herself. Every spirit behind the tragedies here represented in the name of Jesus, we banish you forever. We banish your influence forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, every door that has been shut over your life and destiny, I speak to that door a fata be open heater and theta in the name of jesus christ and i decree and declare by the mystery of the ark in the house of obed edom 90 days from tonight three months believe me in the name of jesus the son of the living god within three months from tonight let there be strange visitations strange testimonies marvelous workings of the power of god so shall it be in the name of jesus christ hallelujah just let me two minutes and we're done if you can hold the hands of anybody please in one minute let's pray for the church on the plateau father we decree and declare that in the name of jesus the church upon the plateau regardless denomination regardless differences in doctrine for the business people across the plateau in the name of jesus for everyone involved in business to whatever decree by the power of the holy spirit you will not go down again that when men say there is a casting down we stand by the spirit of grace and we declare for you let it be that there is a lifting up Amen. number three we pray for plateau the man God has elected and selected by his spirit alongside every other person from governor to senate members to house members federal house of reps state house we decree and declare, may the angel of his presence go before us and grant peace upon this state. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of poverty and failure and everything that brings reproach to the name of Christ over the lives of the saints, we banish it from this territory. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your prayer altar. I pray for your word study life. These are the components that make for your maturity. In the name of Jesus, find grace to pray. In the name of Jesus, find grace to study. In the name of Jesus, I multiply your passion for the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. Let it be so in the name of Jesus that all the ministers and servants of God in this nation and in this state particularly, they will stand as one with one voice putting behind whatever petty differences and stand as one coordinated people. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words 
in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you